Okay, hello and welcome back to part three of three of my Expanse Factions Breakdown videos. So before I even get into this, uh, forgive me if I sound a little bit more nasally than usual. I've been fighting a nasty sinus flu for the last about two weeks here. No, it's not coronavirus, but uh, it hasn't been pleasant either. So with that, let's jump into this. So this week we're finally going to look at the Outer Planets Alliance, or OPA. We're going to delve briefly into the government structure, their background, general overview of Belter culture. So, let's get off with it. First, during this video, I'm going to be referencing Belters more than the OPA, as the OPA isn't so much a governing body so much as a nebulous term in reference to a shared ideology among a culture of peoples. Think kind of like um, Al-Qaeda, even though I'd hate to reference terrorists in this, but similar like there's no one group but they're just an overall term so with that out of the way let's look into what drives the opa which is resource scarcity they're a prime example of how society would evolve in such a state so we're going to look at the belter background as the name implies belters live in the asteroid belt in the uh, mid to outer solar system Living almost entirely in lower zero G, this has caused them over time to evolve to suit these environments better than the inners. They are on the average much taller, leaner, better suited to low oxygen environments, but they're physically weaker and their intelligence levels are on par with baseline humans, but more geared towards survival, ingenuity. I guess you could say that they MacGyver the hell out of everything in the asteroid belt. So. Due to that resource scarcity, they got to make do more, more or less with more with less. Really, there's no other way to put it. They got to make broken equipment last forever. They got to be mindful of every breath of oxygen, bolts, tools, everything, because they're well, hell, millions of kilometers away from uh, any sort of resupply. So, they've got an extreme survivalist mindset. However, due to their comparatively weaker physiology and lower population density, like 50 to 100 million belters compared to 30 billion humans on Earth and 9 billion on Mars, they've historically been marginalized and treated almost as underclass or slave class, having their oxygen and water rationed to dangerous levels if they get at a line on any of the colonies like Ceres or Eros. So, Earth or Mars governing these... Uh, colonies and these docks using them as protectorates they'll ration the earth or the uh, oxygen and the water to all the belters in there while keeping you know the martians and earthers well supplied if the uh, belters decide to get out of line so this has led to uh, an emergence of the overall belter style of self-governance and community reliance on each other and a seriously hostile attitude towards outsiders which we'll get into later so, next we're going to look at the government structure of the OPA. The OPA doesn't have a traditional style of governance. There's no real elected body, uh, no judicial system, no high courts or anything we're familiar with, at least in the show. Belter government is mainly comprised of a loose coalition of family clans, trade groups, uh, cells, and gangs. While these groups can be kind of really diverse, they only have... Uh, only a few have got any sort of real major polar power. Most notably is Tycho Station under Fred Johnson and Kamita Drummer, and Siri Station under Anderson Dawes, with the other major groups being Black Sky and Golden Bow. Overall, though, their style of government seems to fall in line with the anarcho-communist um, area of government due to the extreme resource scarcity. So everything is very communalized, so everyone at least gets a fair shot. And this is often summed up best by Anderson Dawes' statement in Season 1, the more you share, the more your bowl is plentiful. And with that, almost all of their ideology and their derogatory statements and insults are actually based around resource hoarders, calling them well wallas and etc. So... Eventually, the OPA does attempt to form a functioning government in Season 3, but the individualist nature and the overall anarcho-communist tendencies of the Belter mindset make holding it together a pretty Herculean task, and it tends to fracture fairly evenly. And it again fractures along the faction lines, whereas each faction tends to jockey for you know, supremacy among all the others as the head of the OPA state. And finally, we're going to look at some points on Belter culture, notably their preference for tattoos, their language, and their attitudes. 
So the defining feature of belters, aside from their tall physique and uh, weaker overall musculature, is the prevalence of tattoos, most noticeably the collar tattoo around their neck, which is explained by Dawes that the old suit collars would get so hot it would just burn and scar them around the neck. So as new generations didn't have to endure that pain as the suits got better and they got better tech, they began tattooing themselves in honor of the belters who came before. But other than that, the tattoos are just as varied and storied as, as today's cultural tattoos. From simple tattoos on the face and neck to almost full blacking of the skin on the upper head and bodies. So uh, in identification with certain clans and uh, groups. As for the Belter language, seeing as I'm terrible with them myself, I'm just going to quickly read out the wiki description of Belter Creole, which is the main language, seeing as they've done a much better job of expressing this than I ever can. So, as its English name suggests, Belter Creole is the Creole language during humanity's expansion into the solar system. People from many different parts of Earth or Mars would often have to live and work together, and they developed a pidgin language so that they could communicate with one another. Over time, this developed into a full-fledged Creole language, or Lang Belta, which became the lingua franca, or common tongue of the belt and outer planets. So, it's a combination of many languages instead of just the one standard language of either Mars or Earth. Which in itself is fairly neat, because it also includes a lot of gestures and whatnot to communicate. So it's just a very unique language that's developed more or less towards life in space, which is in itself kind of uh, a fun thought experiment. So we're finally going to look at the Belter attitude, which again, due to the environment they are a product of, it can seem abrupt and harsh to outsiders, with the Belter language being very stilted, very short. But to those who are part of the community that uh, understand Belter communities, and Belter's way of life, they see that no word, breath, or gesture is wasted, as it might be their last, so their attitude towards life and towards each other is, you know, if they're going to speak to you, you better be worth the words, the oxygen that it's going to take to address you, because it may be their last breath later on down life that they may have wasted because of, for whatever reason. So with that, every experience relationship is very, very um, I guess you would say savored. Loyalty is valued above all because if they can't have, if they can't trust each other, you know, they all die. And so that just leads to the very insular mindset and their very clan-like behavior. And I know it's kind of uh, there's not a whole lot in this show regarding their culture overall, and a lot of this has to be extrapolated. But uh, overall, I hope this video is giving you a little bit better of an understanding of the OPA and Belter. Uh, culture and government. Okay, so that concludes my video on the OPA and Belter culture. Next video I've got coming up that I'm working on the script for right now, about half done, is John Ringo and Linda Evans' book called The Road to Damascus, science fiction. Uh, it deals with populism under the, or socialism under the guise of populism and how it can be used to subvert societies. It takes place in the Bolo universe. It's actually a really interesting read just outside of the science fiction portion of itself. So with that, I am going to uh, let you guys carry on with your day. Have a good one. If you like this kind of content, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Zero out.